As I remember, Adam, it was upon this fashion. My father bequeathed me by will but poor a thousand crowns and charged my brother on his blessing to breed me well. And there begins my sadness. He stays me at home unkept. For call you that keeping for a gentleman of my birth that differs not from the stalling of an ox? He lets me feed with his hinds, bars me the place of a brother, and as much as in him lies, Minds my gentility with my education. This is it, Adam, that grieves me. And the spirit of my father, which I think is within me, begins to mutiny against this servitude. I will no longer endure it. Shh, Master Orlando, yonder he comes. <laughs> Stay apart, and thou shalt hear how he will shake me up. Now, sir, what make you here? Nothing. I am not taught to make anything. Marry, sir, be better employed. Shall I keep your hogs and eat husks with them? Know you where you are, sir? I know you are my eldest brother. And in the gentle condition of blood, you should so know me. I have as much of my father in me as you. What, boy? Come, come, elder brother, you are too young what? in this. Wilt thou lay hands on me, villain? I am no villain. I am the youngest son of Sir Roland of Boys. And he is thrice a villain that says such a father begot villains. Wert thou not my brother, I would not take this hand from thy throat till this other head pulled out thy tongue for saying Sweet so. Sweet masters, be patient. For your father's remembrance be it a call. Let me go, I say. I will not till I please. You shall hear me. My father charged you by his will to give me good education. You have trained me like a peasant. And the spirit of my father grows strong within me and I will no longer endure it. Master. Therefore, give me the poorer lottery my father left me by testament. With that, I will go buy my fortunes. Well, sir, get you in. I will not long be troubled with you. You shall have some part of your will. I pray you leave me. I will no further offend you than becomes me for my good. Get you with him, you old dog. This old dog, my lord. Most true, I have lost my teeth in your service. I will physic your rankness, and yet give no thousand crowns neither. Was not Charles, the Duke's Reisler, here to speak with me? So please you, he is here at the door. Call him in. Good day, your worship. Good, Monsieur Charles. What's the new news at the new court? There is no news at the court, sir, but the old news. That is, the old duke is banished by his younger brother, the new duke. Where will the old duke live? They say he's already in the forest of Arden. And uh, many, merry men with him. And there they live like the old Robin Hood of England. You wrestle tomorrow before the new duke. Merry do I, sir. And I came to acquaint you with a matter. I am given, sir, secretly to understand that your younger brother Orlando comes against me to try a fall. Tomorrow, sir, I wrestle for my credit, and he that escapes me without some broken limb shall acquit him well. And therefore, out of my love to you, I came hither to acquaint you that you might stay him. Oh. I thank thee for thy love to me, which I will most kindly requite. Oh. I'll tell thee, Charles, 
My brother is the stubbornest young fellow of France. A secret and villainous contriver against me, his natural brother. Therefore, use thy discretion. I'd as lief thou didst break his neck as his finger. I am heartily glad I came hither to you. If he come tomorrow, I'll give him his payment. If ever he go alone again, I'll never wrestle for prize more. And so, God keep your worship. Farewell, good Charles. Yet I know not why. Hates nothing more than he. Rosalind, sweet my cuz, be merry. Dear Celia, I show more mirth than I am mistress of. Unless you could teach me to forget a banished father, you must not learn me how to remember any extraordinary pleasure. Herein I see thou lovest me not with the full weight that I love thee. If my uncle, thy banished father, had banished my uncle, the duke thy father, so thou hadst been still with me. I could have taught my love to take thy father for mine. So wouldst thou, if the truth of thy love to me were so righteously tempered as mine is to thee. Well, I will forget. You know my father hath no child but I. And truly, when he dies, thou shalt be his heir. Mm -hmm. For what he hath taken away from thy father perforce, I will render thee again mm -hmm. an affection. By mine honor, I will. And when I break that oath, let me turn monster. <laughs> Therefore, my sweet Rose, my dear Rose, be merry. From henceforth, I will come and devise sports. Let me see. But think you of falling in love? Mary, I pray do. <laughs> to make sport with all. <laughs> But love no man in good earnest. No. Nor no further in sport neither than with safety of a pure blush thou mayst in honor come off again. What shall be our sport then? Oh, here comes Monsieur Le Bon, with his mouth full of news. Bonjour, sure, Monsieur Le Bon. What's the news? Fair Princess, you're going to lose much good sport. Sport? Of what color? What color, madame? <laughs> How shall I answer you? As wit and fortune will... Eh bien, j'allais justement vous dire. Good wrestling, ladies. And they are ready to perform it. Let us see it, cuz. Since this youth will not be entreated, his own peril on his forwardness. Is yonder the man? Isn't he, madame? Alas, he is too young. How oh, now, daughter and cousin? Are you crept hither to see the wrestling? I, my liege. So please you give us leave. 
You will take little delight in it, I can tell you. There is such odds in the man. In pity of the challenger's youth, I would fain dissuade him, but he will not be entreated. Speak to him, ladies. See if you can move him. I'll not be by. Call him hither, good Monsieur Lebeau. Monsieur the challenger, the princess calls for you. I attend them with all respect and duty. Young man, have you challenged Charles the wrestler? No, fair princess. He is the general challenger. I come but in as others do to try with him the strength of my youth. Young gentlemen, your spirits are too bold for your years. We pray you for your own sake to give over this attempt. Do, young sir. I beseech you, punish me not with your hard thoughts. Wherein I confess me much guilty to deny so fair and excellent ladies anything. But let your fair eyes and gentle wishes go with me to my trial. Wherein, if I be foiled, there is but one shamed who was never gracious. If killed, but one dead that is willing to be so. I shall do my friends no wrong, for I have none to lament me. The world no injury, for in it I have nothing. Only in the world I fill up a place which may be better supplied when I have made it empty. The little strength I have, I would it were with you, and mine to eke out hers. <laughs> This young gallant that is so desirous to lie with his mother. You mean to mock me after? You should not have mocked me before. But come your ways. Would I were invisible to catch the strong fellow by the leg? What is thy name, young man? Orlando Malige, the youngest son of Sir Roland de Bois. I would thou hadst been son to some man else. The world esteemed thy father honorable, but I did find him still mine enemy. But fare thee well, thou art a gallant youth. 
I would thou hadst told me of another father. Were I my father, cuz, would I do this? My father loved Sir Roland as his soul. Gentle cousin, let us go thank him and encourage him. Sir, you have well deserved. If you do keep your promises in love but justly, as you have exceeded promise, your mistress shall be happy. Gentlemen, wear this for me, one out of suits with fortune that could give more but that her hand lacks means. Shall we go, cuz? Aye. Very well, fair gentleman. Can I not say thank you? He calls us back. My pride fell with my fortune. I'll ask him what he would. Did you call, sir? Sir, you have wrestled well and overthrown more than your enemies. Will you go, Rosalind? Have with you. Fare you well. What passion hangs these weights upon my tongue? I cannot speak to her. Yet she urged confidence. Oh, poor Orlando, thou art overthrown. Or Charles, or something weaker, masters thee. Good sir, I do in friendship counsel you to leave this place. Albeit you have deserved high commendation, yet such is now the Duke's condition that he misconstrues all that you have done. I thank you, sir. And pray you, tell me this. Which of the two was daughter of the Duke that here was at the wrestling? Indeed, the taller is his daughter. The other is Rosaline, daughter to the banished Duke. But I can tell you that of late this Duke hath taken displeasure against his gentle niece, grounded upon no other argument, but that the people praise her for her virtues and pity her for her good father's sake. And on my life, his malice against this lady will suddenly break forth. Sir, fare you well. I rest much bound unto you. Fare you well. Thus must I from the smoke into the smother. From tyrant duke unto a tyrant brother. But heavenly Rosalind. than myself. Is it possible on such a sudden you should fall into so strong a liking with old Sir Roland's youngest son? Duke, my father, loved his father dearly. Does it therefore ensue that you should love his son dearly? No. By this kind of chase I should hate him, for my father hated his father dearly. Yet I hate not Orlando. No, Faith. Hate him not for my sake. Oh, look. Here comes the Duke.
mistress, dispatch you with your safest haste and get you from our court. Me, uncle? You, cousin. Within these ten days, if the thou beast found so near our public court as twenty miles, thou diest for it. I do beseech your grace. Let me the knowledge of my fault bear with me. Never so much as in a thought unborn did I offend your highness. Thus do all traitors. Thou art thy father's daughter, there's enough. So was I when your highness took his dukedom. So was I when your highness banished him. Treason is not inherited, my lord. Or if we did derive it from our friends, what's that to me? My father was no traitor. Then good my liege, mistake me not so much. 